So changing jobs comes with both opportunities and risks. And there may be some situations where you start a job and feel that the job itself is not what you were promised, right? So this could be anything from the duties that are not what you expected. Perhaps um, it is more junior than the impression you were initially given in the interview. Uh, what do you do then when a new job is not promised, i.e. perhaps uh, you were job catfished? Is that even a thing? We'll find out in a moment. Uh, industrial psychologist Fiona Martin is in the building to chat to you and I about all of that. A very good morning, Fiona. Welcome back. Morning, William. Thank you for having me. So the premise of job catfishing, let's unpack that and, and just start there and explain it. So if you get to a job and as you mentioned in your intro, it's not as promised. It doesn't necessarily mean that there was malice on the part of the employer to mis misrepresent the opportunity. It could sometimes be that there was miscommunication, um, perhaps there was a misunderstanding in terms of what you thought and you know what was explained. However, it is, you know, it does happen from time to time that an employer, because of course they want to make the opportunity sound enticing, so they might be tempted to oversell it or to, you know, basically exaggerate certain aspects, you know, right. which don't end up to, to be true. And how long should you wait? So you are now in the position and you are seeing, uh, given the roles that you're executing on a daily basis, that, no, wait a minute, this is not what we agreed on initially, right? How, when do I address it? Okay, so I would generally give it a little bit of time before you actually address it. So what's a good time? Three months is usually, you know, a good, you know, that's often how, a pro how long a probationary period would, would last, right, from both angles. Right. Or in some cases, you might even have to give it six months depending on the complexity of the environment. I personally have had jobs that have had a bit of a wobbly start, but ended up to be really great experiences. So I think at least three to six months will give you enough time to collect information and actually determine, is it a phase? Maybe I got there when the company was going undergoing through many changes. Maybe I got there just during a bad time. So it at least give it time to see that is it going to self-correct or no actually this is a permanent situation and when you now have seen that this is a concern for you and you are addressing it what sort of tone do you take on how do you approach your I call them your manager or the person who you report to to say listen I'm not happy so the people that you can speak to, as you rightfully pointed out, are either the line manager, that would be ideal, or you could address HR, right, depending on the context. Right. So the tone is, you know, set up a conversation to actually discuss it. Don't mention it in passing. And what you can do to open up just so that you're obviously tactful is you can start by highlighting what you have been enjoying at the company. So if there are certain aspects of the jobs that you like, perhaps the culture, you know, or, you know, how you see yourself growing within that organization. So you start off on a good tone to say, you know, I'm enjoying it here. I like to think or I like to see a future for myself within this organization. Mm. And then from there, in coming to that meeting, you need to be prepared. Mm. So look for whether it was email communication, um, the job description is often a very useful tool in this instance. So mm. get the job description, get you know any notes of conversation you had during the hiring processes mm. that outline what was said and what the expectations were. And then of course, you can then talk about the discrepancies. So this is what the job description said. This is what you communicated to me during the interview. And here are the discrepancies. And the idea of the conversation of course you want to be tactful and you want to take a problem solving approach so you will then let them know what are some of the things they can do to rectify that right because mm -hmm. you obviously want to indicate that i'm willing to make this work and um, you know you're not just raising it for the sake of complaining but you want them to rectify so that the duties and the expectations are what you thought you know coming into that particular position i like what you're saying with the you know first you know first uh, assess if there is job growth within the space you're in. Yes, it's not what you were promised, but now you're in this role. And a lot of this happens in the creative space where you'll get for some brands, a brand manager who reports to a marketing manager. But most of the time, the decision making and the execution is done by the brand manager who then lands up doing the work of the marketing manager. And they always have a, this tug of war to say, well, I'm actually doing your job the marketing manager says, not really, I'm responsible for the bigger budgets and the overall picture of what you are bringing to me. And, you know, could that be considered a catfish, a job catfishing situation? 
in some instances? So, yeah, so I guess in terms of catfishing, it could be where the responsibilities that you were indicated you'll be responsible for, you know, are not as it seems. Yeah. So that's why in interviews, it's very important to see who do I collaborate with, particularly mm. if you are coming into a department. So you want to know what is the value chain. So if I'm looking after the brand, is there someone that does design? Is there someone that does graphic? Is there someone that does, you know, whatever the case? Right. So in that way, you can then be able to determine. And sometimes you might actually get a sense of, well, if I report to this individual, what does that mean in terms of seniority, in terms of some of the conflict that might come, particularly within that uh, position? So when you are then deciding whether to stay or move on, right? You've made your decision. They've explained to you, this is where we are at. You feel it's a job catfishing situation. What should you do? Should you move on? And how do you make that decision? You have to then determine, is there any value in me sticking it out or staying here for longer? So in that case, there might be other advantages of that company. Perhaps they pay well, perhaps there's opportunities for growth, right. um, you know, maybe the exposure that you're getting. So, however, if there are too many deal breakers, you know, from your perspective, so maybe mm -hmm. the job is too junior or there's too much admin and that's not what you signed up for. And in fact, you don't see yourself uh, doing that and they're not willing to correct it. So if there's deal breakers or elements that you feel are very career limited, in terms of staying at that job longer, you might then want to opt to move uh, or start applying for something else, especially if you determine that it's not going to work out. Okay, so count the number of red flags and if it's more than four or five, then make the jump. Yes, and I guess it depends also what you value. But if it's a case where there is really nothing that makes it worthwhile you staying there for longer, you might then decide that it is worthwhile to, to move to another opportunity. Yeah, because then you avoid the anxieties of job dissatisfaction. Hanti, the problem is just for you know, it wasn't explained in terms of your, uh, you, you know, your responsibilities and duties. You had other expectations. So what's the career impact of leaving a job in that cloud? Just prepare an explanation, right? Mm. And you know, you can be upfront in that when you join the organizations, there were certain expectations that were not met, yes. or you feel that you know the role is not as expected, and you can even go to the extent of explaining to them that you have tried to resolve it. If you've stayed long at previous organizations, you can even use that to reinforce the fact that, look, in my previous organizations, you can see I've stayed for relatively long. So this short tenure here is not reflective or representative of me being a person that is not able, you know, able to, to, to remain stable in a job for a substantial amount of time. And in wrapping up our conversation this morning, uh, Fiona, we've seen sometimes when they advertise jobs, uh, they'll advertise X amount in terms of your uh, a cost to company or how much you are likely to earn and after the interview they tell you well based on your experience this is how much we are going to give you based on what you've presented to us could that not be considered also misrepresentation yeah so that actually happens quite often where you know a, a figure is given up front and then you get less than even what the minimum that, that they stipulated so in that regard um, it is acceptable for a company to pay people you know differentiate differently on a scale based on experience, right. but it must be within a range. So if they're offering you less than what was even the minimum stipulated, then you need to raise that, right? Mm. Because ultimately you do not want to be underpaid in relation to what other people, you know, in a similar role with the similar level of experience are right. in that organization. And you can ask them to clarify, to say, how did you arrive at the decision that you know you're going to pay me less than what was indicated mm. and in fact you can bring in your experience you can bring in the type of impact that you can make within that company to be able to justify getting a salary that is commensurate because of course it will cause you you know you're not going to be happy knowing that you are getting substantially less than people who are in a similar role within the same company absolutely fascinating thank you so much for your time this morning fiona thank you always a pleasure man industrial psychologist fiona martin here on the morning show are we taking a quick break? Stay with us.